Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one, yet again, based on one of your newer suggestions. Please keep them coming, I'll probably end up doing just one more for this go around, and then I'll give it a brief rest and start focusing on another series. This one has to do with an interesting phenomenon that is found somewhere there in Peru that to this day, people have no idea what it's for. That's why it remains such a mystery, even after all these years. All that people can guess are two main themes, including a third item, all of which I'll discuss here in a minute, but as far as which one is the truth and which one isn't, it's still up to debate. It is pretty much very much broad, wide open when it comes to which one is the correct answer. Either answer could be the one, and it has to do with this. You're looking at it now, it goes by various names, but the most common name, the most common colloquial name is the Band of Holes. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the mysterious and fascinating info associated with this phenomenon. So what are these band of holes? Well again they go by several different names. Um, one name for example uh, literally spells out in Spanish as Serpent Mountain and then another one spells out also as smallpox hill it all has to do with how it looks uh, how this phenomenon visually looks either from close up or more interestingly from far away where this is found is you have to go again to peru to an area known as the pisco valley and then a very specific area known as the nazca plateau which you're looking at a picture of here in fact google maps you'll be able to see it in person as it looks right now it won't be too much of a clear detail but still Still, you'll be able to see what it entails. And so here are the physical characteristics of these band of holes. Imagine if you took an average hole, in this case measuring about one meter or about three feet wide in diameter, and then make about maybe a hundred centimeters deep and then multiply that by about 5,000 times, and that's what these band of holes are. They all run up this hill leading up to that mountain, and it runs about one and a half kilometers in total length. And then as far as the actual width of this trail, it can vary anywhere from between 14 meters up to 19 meters as the average, and then on the highest end, up to 21 meters. So that's all that is, essentially. It's a small pockets of holes that are there, each one next to each other, and then continuing in a consecutive line. All of them that are actually described as small pits that just have these raised edges, and then you'll see that some of them still to this day, I mean, they look almost like they did probably back then, you'll see these stones within them to help create that separation. And all these holes just all banded together, and then they lead up to, for whatever reason, this mysterious mountain. And uh, when you count how many times this has happened, again, this is something involving about 5,000 such plus holes, you realize that this was a monumental task. Whoever did this did not do this overnight. This would have taken a very long time to do so, one after the other, using archaic technology uh, back then. Even now, imagine a project like this that would just come about um, even with... I don't know, some kind of Department of Transportation somewhere. This would probably take them years to do so. And here in this case, you're using technology that's estimated to have been, at least based on the age of these holes, about five to 6,000 years ago. That's a long time ago. We're talking about in the early ages of, of human civilization, practically. So well, however this happened, uh, somewhere back then, that tribe or local people decided to make these holes. And then that's where you see to this day. It's a testament too with regards to the materials they used, how they built these holes because five to six thousand years later the fact that they haven't been overtaken by weather, by any kind of climate change, by anything as far as erosion or even other type of, of, of natural uh, type of like let's say rain storms anything else that would normally change the terrain around them here in this case these holes are very much so still to this day now uh, the big mystery though is what were their purpose what exactly were they built for um why do why do, do we not have an answer associated with them well much attention has been drawn to that fact and a lot of people have surveyed these holes there was a gentleman by the name of victor wolfgang von hagen who 
surveyed that uh, the set of holes back then in 1953. He's the one that went into a little bit more detailed. He was surmising at first, and it looked like that's what a lot of people thought at first, that there was some kind of unused graves, that there was something buried underneath these graves in terms of, let's say, bodies or some other type of of, of ceremony, something else where you could find uh, people within these graves, but as it turns out, they were empty. Every single one of them was empty. There's nothing in terms of any kind of bodies associated with them at all. No mummies, nothing. Uh, nothing that you could even find associated with other graves, like in terms of leftover treasures. You know how certain cultures, uh, whenever people were buried, they were buried with all these artifacts within them to take them into the next life. Well, in this case, nothing was there. It's just completely empty, one hole after the other. So he was in turn someone that did all these photographic aerial surveys, and he even mentioned another expedition that did it as well. His conclusion was that, was that they were strange and mysterious pockmarks, but he found them at least to be uh, some kind of engineers in terms of the Incas being responsible for their creation. So I don't know if that's 100% true. Um, if anyone else can point out who is like the, the main culture or who are the people that develop these things, then that would be something that could be pointed out, please, in the comments below. But then another theory as far as what these are used for in a weird way kind of makes sense. Uh, the main notion seems to be this. These holes were probably created as a form of storage. In a weird way, these are like the storage lockers of back then, much like we have storage lockers of today. And so this is why people were stating that this could have been used as a way to create something where each hole contains something important or something that could be held within, uh, let's say, one hole next to one person, one hole next to the other person. Like each person owned a separate item in terms of their storage, or it could have been used as storage for whoever the rulers were there at the time. They could have used this location as a form of their empire's larger storing sites is how I read it. Um, that's actually coming from an archaeologist by the name of John Hyslop who wrote that in his book, The Inca Road System. And then that's what he put forward that notion that these were storage sites. And in a way, it kind of makes sense. Imagine having something like this built to last the, 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 the test of time, built to last weather, very extreme weather, it seems like as well. And so you would have something that it would be storing all these important things for people and then they would just simply come back and know that there would be something in terms of markers, some kind of, of help, some kind of guide where people would state, this is where you stored this. So that's where your hole is. That's where you find exactly where you stored it from. Or if someone else, a different person came in looking for their storage, that's where they would find it there too. So in a weird way, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because all you have to do is look at today's examples involving storage lockers. They all look the same, don't they? Any storage locker in the country, you could go there, which, by the way, are the largest, fastest growing business in the U.S. I mean, if, you, if you're wondering where all these storage lockers are coming from, you're not the only person because they are by far the fastest growing units. In fact, there's more storage lockers I remember reading today than there are apartments in the U.S. It's crazy when you think about that, right? But yes, uh, that, how we see storage lockers today, this might have been their version back then as well. Another theory is that it was used kind of a storage, but more on the lines of something else. Like in other words, measurements to make sure that certain produce was being given to whoever was ruling that state at the time as their tribute. So that way, if it was 100% deemed that you must have certain amount of food presented to the, the state or the government, whoever that was in terms of the Incas at the time, people made sure by, make, by absolutely putting these specific holes filled with that produce and that way they would never ever run short um, and then if there was a specific amount they had to meet then as long as they met them within these holes then they knew exactly that they would not have any trouble thereafter kind of a stretch but at least that's another theory associated with it those are the two big ones in fact when it comes to this stuff in fact there's going to be more 
apparently studies associated to try to find pollen or other type of items within the holes to make sure that it showcases that theory as well. And then a more far-fetched one, one that always comes into play, is uh, anything involving mysterious items within the world. You can go no farther than ancient aliens to think that there's always going to be some tie in to some kind of, of, of civilization, some Asian civilization mixing in with aliens out there. And as you'll see in this picture here, uh, Giorgio um, had visited that location location as well as always making some kind of claim associated with uh, aliens and UFOs mixing in with these holes. What exactly it could be, I don't know. If, if anyone's seen that episode, uh, please uh, post what was listed there in the comments below and that way you can share it with everyone. But again, that's yet another interesting theory. But what do you guys think as far as these band of holes there in Peru? Anybody been there before? Anybody see them in person? It does seem like it's something that would make a great bucket list to go out there and then even check these holes out maybe even take a very small stone from it as a nice little memento and realize that you're dealing with some mysterious history that's there in peru that no one again has any concrete answer to this day but if anyone has any more info anything else might have missed please post those comments below all right everyone thanks again as always take care